In this short video, we're going to talk about algorithms which are an improvement over Euler methods, and they are higher order numerical methods for initial value problems. So recall with Euler's method, on each subinterval, we used a linear approximation. And that's equivalent to using a first degree Taylor polynomial. Recall that a Taylor series, and here we're going to use h equals x1 minus x0, would say that y evalu evaluated at x sub 1 would be the value of y at x sub 0 plus y prime evaluated at x sub 0 times h, and then y double prime evaluated at x sub 0 over 2 factorial plus y triple prime, and so on. So I should include here really a plus and then our three dots there, indicating that that pattern continues forever. All right, so but what we used was just the uh, up to the linear term. So that was our linear approximation in Euler's method. So the error on each subinterval, and this is from the mean value theorem. Really what you're looking at is the next term in the Taylor series. And then the mean value theorem will say that it's going to be some number between x sub 0 and x sub 1, uh, the second derivative of that. And so bottom line is, is that the, on each subinterval you're getting an error which is bounded by a constant uh, times h squared. So the total error, well, you have to realize that you have uh, capital N subintervals or 1 over h subintervals. So you're going to have to take the error from uh, one subinterval, multiply it times the number of subintervals. And that's why the total error is proportional to h. Well, suppose that uh, I want to get a better approximation, say one that is uh, of order h squared. Well, what I would do then is take the second degree Taylor polynomial. So in other words, I would take the first three terms of my approximation. And so then the error on each subinterval would be proportional to h cubed. And then since I have my 1 over h subintervals, that means the total error will be proportional to mh squared. And so if I take h to be 0 0.1, I would expect that the total error would be bounded by some constant times uh, 0 0.001. All right, so again, remember that we're trying to find an estimate for y of x. x is a specific number. And we know that the differ differential equation tells us that y prime is some function of x and y. And we have an initial condition that y of x naught equals y naught. And what we're going to do is use a, a third, I'm sorry, second order Taylor polynomial. And then this is something that you see a lot in these approximations. What does HOT stand for? It stands for higher order terms. All right, so that means terms whose exponent on H is higher than 2. All right, so we know how to get an estimate of Y prime. Uh, because uh, we have it in our differential equation, y prime equals f of x comma y. Well, what about y double prime, the second derivative? Well, the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. And so by the definition of the derivative, that would be the limit as h approaches 0 of y prime at x naught plus h minus y prime, prime at x naught all over h. So if h is small, we can 
approximate the, double, the second derivative with the difference quotient here. And we can calculate or estimate, we can estimate the values of y prime uh, by using our formula from the differential equation and our estimated values for y of x naught. And remember, uh, y, or y prime of x naught will need the estimated value of y of x naught. Uh, and that will give us an estimate for the second derivative. So if I put that together, so my y prime at x naught is going to be f at x naught comma y naught. And then I can go ahead and uh, replace then my y prime with f evaluated at x naught plus h comma y naught. And then I should have had here f of x naught comma y naught. So let's go ahead and kind of push things over and put in a comma y naught there. All right. So I'll do the same thing here. So at least for the first step, then, I could get a y sub 1, which would be an approximation here by just, I know f, f is a given to me. I know h, I've chosen that. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so I can simplify this, though, because I notice that I have, outside the brackets, I have f of x naught comma y naught times h. And inside the brackets, I'm going to have an f of x naught y naught that has a minus sign in front of it. There's a half, and then an h is going to divide out, so I'll just have an h there. So I can simplify this formula. And then uh, once I've simplified that formula, I could say, well, I could get an approximation. I'll replace the 1 with n plus 1. I'll replace the 0 with n. So I'll have x sub n's in here. And so I can get a recursion formula here that says that an approximation for y at x sub n plus 1 is going to be something I call y sub n plus 1. And then I just need to fill out this formula. Now, in the formula, I'm going to have to first find the values or estimates of k1 and k2. But that's just using the known value of h, the known value of x sub n, the previously computed value of y sub n, and the function f. So you'd have to calculate. Uh, k1, calculate k2. From there, then, you can use this formula here. And actually, I should make a correction to it because it's not y at x sub n. We don't know that. But what we do know is y sub n. All right, so I went ahead and used a numerical or some technology to be able to employ this method. And again, let me correct. It's not y of x sub n, but y sub n. And uh, so again, we have the blue curve is exact. And it may be difficult to see that we have the white set of line segments. Uh, there are actually triangles there. Uh, that's what we get from this uh, improved Euler's method. So it's a tremendous improvement. There's still a gap if you look close enough up here. There's still a gap between the final triangle 
and the uh, where the uh, exact curve hits uh, x equals 1.5 but it is a tremendous improvement so this improved Euler's method is also known as a second order Runga Kuda method so Runga Kuda Runga and Kuda were two uh, German mathemat mathematicians uh, I grew up saying Runga Kuda but uh, now I lived in Germany for a while so I'm used to saying Runga Kuta uh, so anyway the abbreviation is RK2 it's second order because it used the second degree Taylor polynomial and then you can see that there could be a third order and a fourth order Runga Kuta method uh, abbreviated RK4 by using a fourth degree polynomial now this method has been revised over the years so it, there, there are many different variants of it uh, with uh, a lot of work has gone in to make uh, enhancements in regard to accuracy and stability but the way that the formulation that we're going to use is this uh, simple one so we're going to get our next value of y from well uh, our previous values uh, and then we have the h there so and of course I shouldn't forget that you're also going to add in your previous y value so it always looks like you have uh, you know some kind of the previous y value some kind of improved estimate for the slope uh, and then of course times h and so uh, in here you can see that we actually have six values we take the k1 once both of k2 and k3 are taken twice and the k4 is once and then we divide by six so the idea is that we're using a fourth order degree Taylor polynomial to derive values for k which will give us a very good estimate or approximation for the slope at that value of x, x sub n. So how do you evaluate this? Well, you have to calculate each of these uh, k values in order. So you calculate k1 because you need k1 to calculate k2, and then you need k2 to calculate k3 and you need k3 to calculate k4. Uh, so notice that k1 is already the very first approximation we use for the tangent line, that the value that goes in the y slot in k2 it comes from the linear approximation, and then if we do some thinking, we could probably continue this and say that this is uh, the y value in k3 is from a second order approximation and the y value in k4 of course would be from a fourth value approximation or fourth order approximation uh, this method gives excellent results um, being a fourth order method that would mean that you would expect that the absolute error would be proportional to h to the power of 4 uh, in this graph and we have the exact curve we have the original Euler's method curve for comparison and you can see that the uh, points from the Runger Kutta method which are the tiny magenta triangles they land exactly on top of the curve as far as this graph can tell and in fact, if we look at the absolute errors, remember from Euler's method, uh, to even get down to below 10% uh, error, uh, we had to choose h equals 0.01. Uh, however, with the second order method, um, with h equals 0.1, the error is already at 0 0.04, and the for the fourth order method we're at 0 0.0013 and so again you can kind of see this trend that the uh, error is going to be proportional to 
uh, h, so h is 0 0.1, and so our absolute error is about 0 0.56. When we had a second order method, h squared would be 0 0.01, and sure enough, it's on the same order of magnitude, and then we would expect the absolute error to be around uh, some constant times uh, 10 to the minus 4, and that's exactly what we found for our absolute value, our absolute error here.